Hey, it's Allison from Computers.Mom here with some tips and tricks for using Zoom effectively. If you've ever been on a Zoom video call but would like to get a little more comfortable and proficient using it, you're in the right place. In this video, I'll cover the basic audio and video controls and also how to change your background and layout of your screen and use chat. We won't have time to cover screen sharing in this video, that'll be in the next one. I've invited a few trusted colleagues to help with this demonstration, so let's get started. For the purposes of this video, we assume that you already have Zoom installed on your computer. If you're totally new to Zoom, you might want to try our intro video, which is linked above. Suppose you're invited to a Zoom call. Before you join the call, you can change the background that people see behind you, either for privacy or just for fun. To do so, click the gear in the upper right hand corner to get to the settings, and in the list of settings on the left, click Virtual Background. Zoom provides you with a few different background images to choose from. For most people, you can just click on one to choose it. But if, like me, you're using an older computer, you may see this message telling you that your computer isn't powerful enough. But don't give up. All you need to make it work is a plain green background behind you. Even a big sheet of green paper will do, and you're good to go like this. If you want to get fancy, you can add your own photo or video background by clicking the plus sign right here. I'm going to stick with this outer space one for now, and just click the close button to leave the settings window. Now we go ahead and sign into the Zoom call, joining with video so everyone can see us and with audio so they can hear us. Right now, when we start out, we're in speaker view. Whoever's currently talking automatically shows up in the large main part of the window here, and all the participants show up in a strip across the top of the screen, with the speaker highlighted. If it's a big meeting and all the participants don't fit, you may have to scroll to see the rest of them. And then along the bottom of the screen are the controls. If you're in a very large meeting or a presentation, the host may have muted everyone in advance, and you won't have the ability to turn your own audio on and off. In this small meeting, I can just click on the mute button to turn my sound on or off. There's a shortcut, too. If you're mostly listening with mute on, and you just want to speak briefly, hold down the spacebar on your keyboard. That will temporarily unmute you until you release it. Notice how the controls disappear when you don't do anything for a moment? To bring them back up, just move your mouse and they reappear. We can also turn our video on and off in case we need visual privacy. And if you look closely, you can see that there's a symbol just to the right of the audio and video controls. Clicking on that brings up a menu with more options. Here, for example, is another way to get to the visual background settings we used earlier. When your Zoom window is full screen like this, there are several different ways to get out of full screen if you need to access something else on your computer. You can just tap the Escape key on the upper left-hand corner of your keyboard, or double-click on the screen, or click the Exit Full Screen control up here on the right. Notice that as we go in and out of full screen, the participants part of the window changes position automatically. If it's blocking something you want to see, you can also just drag it around the screen yourself, wherever you want it. You can also use the little buttons on the end of this window to change your view of the participants so you see just yourself small, everyone, or just yourself larger. And if you click on the gallery view control right up here, this is an important one, you can switch the whole screen from speaker view to gallery view so you can see everyone in the same size, like this. Now that I have the layout I want, let's take a look at chat. If you want to send a private message to one of the other participants, move your mouse over their image and then click the little blue button in the upper right hand corner. That gives you the option to chat with that person. When we click on chat, a new window opens up where I can type a message to send to that person, which is not visible to the rest of the participants. It's sort of like passing notes in class. I can close the window and access it again from the chat control right here along the bottom. The chat window can also be moved around the screen so it's where you want it, out of the way, and you can send messages to more than one person at a time or to everyone at the same time. If the chat window is closed and I have an incoming message, the chat control flashes like this. It's pretty hard to miss. Chat is incredibly useful for asking questions, sharing written information, sharing links to websites, and things like that. One last window I want to cover today, and that is participants right here. Let's zoom in and take a quick look at this. Participants gives you a compact list of who's on the call and whether they are muted or not. So that's handy, but what I really want you to notice is the raise hand button right here. 
If you're in one of those big presentations where everyone's muted, this is how you let the host know that you have something to say. When they're ready for you to speak, the host will either unmute you or invite you to unmute yourself and also lower your hand. So that covers the basic controls you'll use most of the time. If you can spare one more minute, I'm going to end with two quick checklists to make every Zoom call a success. Before you start any Zoom call, you're going to want to make sure your equipment is ready, that you've signed up for a Zoom account, you've chosen which device you're going to use for the call, you've chosen your video and audio accessories, headphones, webcams, things like that, and they're already working, that you've set up the Zoom app on the device you're going to use, and checked your internet connection. Make sure you're on Wi-Fi if you're using a phone or an iPad. And finally, test your setup. You can do that easily at this website, zoom.us forward slash test. Once your equipment's ready, you also need to prepare yourself and your location. You never know when you might have to stand up in the middle of a call, so make sure you're wearing appropriate attire on your whole body. Make sure you're in a quiet location and that your lighting and the background are good. You don't want to be in a place that's too dark, but you also don't want light shining at the screen, and you want your background to be not distracting. Finally, if there's any chance that you're going to share your computer screen, make sure there's nothing embarrassing on the screen before you get on the call. That's it, folks. Thanks for watching. Please feel free to leave comments or questions below. Click the like button if you found this helpful, and don't forget to subscribe for more Computers.mom videos.